Way back in the old days of 1999, there was a void between the 8th Doctor, Paul McGann in his TV movie, and the soft rebooted 9th Doctor, Christopher Eccleston. Within that void, there was Hugh Grant. But there was also British acting royalty Rowan Atkinson, Richard E. Grant, Jim Broadbent, and Joanna Lumley as the series' titular Time Lord. As part of comic relief that year, this incredible cast were all brought together to record a special spin-off spoof Doctor Who episode penned by Stephen Moffat, by the way, who obviously went on to write for Doctor Who and then become the showrunner. This was called The Curse of Fatal Death. Filmed at the famous Pinewood Studios in England, The Curse of Fatal Death pits Atkinson's Doctor against Price's cackling, scenery-chewing master, howling such unforgettable lines as It will be the deadly vengeance of deadly revenge! <laughs> Naturally, the episode leans not just on the star power and acting chops of its cast, but their expansive comedic sensibilities. It was tongue-in-cheek and self-referential to the core. They go to the planet of the bottom burpers, for goodness sake. It's so Rowan Atkinson-level comedy that you just have to love it. We also had a fantastic sequence of the Master and the Doctor trying to one-up themselves, and then the Master comes in with some Dalek bumps. Yes, they're titties. Dalek titties. After chasing the Doctor down and kidnapping him, rather than just killing him in a classic nonsensical villain trope, the Daleks accidentally exterminate him, forcing him to regenerate into a mirror-licking Richard E. Grant, with two further regenerations, the bashful Jim Broadbent, and then a Hugh Grant form known as the Handsome Doctor, much to his companion and, at this point, future wife's delight. Unfortunately, this Doctor doesn't last for more than just a couple of lines, and they're very quickly turning into Joanna Lumley, who also has Dalek bumps. Look! With his natural charisma, roguish schoolboy charms, and his classic English accent, he is literally the perfect pick for the Doctor. And back in 2005, that was nearly a thing. Since he described playing the Doctor as being a lifelong ambition, he was the perfect person to board the TARDIS and become the next generations of viewers' very own Doctor. But who in their right mind would approach Hollywood royalty to take the lead role in a Saturday night tea time TV show? Well, Russell T Davies. Hugh came within spitting distance of the official role of the Ninth Doctor when Davies offered him the part in 2004. As we know, he turned it down, but that doesn't mean he didn't regret it, as he has publicly stated on several occasions. However, this may not be the end of Grant working on Doctor Who, as he since has expressed the interest in playing a villain on the show. Nonetheless, we never got Hugh Grant in the TARDIS, at least officially, but we did get the absolutely impeccable Series 1 from Christopher Eccleston. You guys already know what I think about that. You know that I love it. So... You win some, you lose some, but you still also kind of win because Eccleston was great. So there we go. That is when Hugh Grant got very close to sticking his key into the TARDIS door. Let me know what you thought of this in the comment section below. And would you like to see him as a villain like you'd like to be? I think that'd be great. Usually actors don't turn down Doctor Who, even if they're really big A-listers. You get a Doctor Who script, they take it. It's Doctor Who. You don't say no. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to Who Culture if you haven't already. I've been Rich. You can follow me on Twitter at PickupChangeToe and on Twitch at Rich's Live. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you soon.